Baldness. Does it affect people? Yes. Do some people get to a point where they just say, fuck it? Absolutely. And that's what today is about, boys and girls. The man who says, I don't care. It does not bother me. It does not define me. I still have a life to live. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Jesus. The grind of the barber and how a person like Jesus can bring joy to your life. The grind of a barber. What's the grind of the barber consist of? That grind, baby, that grind of being in there as early as seven and being out by the time it's like nine. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And for those that don't know, hope one day you know, because I mean, it's just, it's, it's bound to be at least one of those seasons that eventually, inevitably come to your life. All right, that grind, that hustle has to come into your life. And let me tell you something, when that grind comes, and you're just knocking these haircuts out of the way. Back to back to back to back. There are a select few clients that you have that once they walk through that door, joy just comes to you. Joy comes into your life. You're damn near crying in the inside. You know that once you get this client in your chair, you're gonna knock him out just as fast. This is the easy breezy. Gotta appreciate your easy breezies. Don't ever think you don't need an easy breezy you need them you need them now guys as you can see in this video there's already you can tell you can instantly tell the difference in my station i don't even use these tools anymore i don't use the seniors anymore matter of fact I gave Lorenzo my Slimline Pros. I actually do like Slimline Pros, but I gave it to him because, I mean, Lorenzo needs them. He's developing his barber techniques right now at the age of two, so I just gave it to him. Should I give Lorenzo the seniors? Let me know in the comments below if I should give Lorenzo the seniors. They're just collecting dust right now. All right, so guys, aquí mismo, what we have going on is me preparing to start using my shears on Jesus. As you can see, even my shear game is different. I don't even have that many shears anymore, but we'll cover that on another day. I'm starting off the cut in a way I don't even start cuts anymore. I always start with a vertical parting to just go straight across, create the guideline, and then from there go with horizontal partings. But I don't even do it like this over here. Like I'm literally just all over the place and it's very frustrating, I must say, looking at this video. And it's kind of messed up because this is only a year ago, just about, and it's taken me that long to figure it out. Or maybe it's just because I never really set a steady system. Yeah, wipe them down, Fonz, wipe them down, wipe them down. Look, look at how unorganized. I'm doing the vertical parting now, after I went horizontal. How unorganized is this, boys and girls? Not right, don't do this. Don't do this. Steer away from this. Don't even mimic me. Just this is for entertainment purposes at this point or just letting you know, don't do this. Oh, and by the way, guys, look, I have shown some videos already of clients that are going bald. OK, and yes, male baldness sucks. I don't I, I'm not dealing with it. I'm just like lighting my corners for those that have been watching me for a while. But obviously, I'm not dealing with the with with the struggle that is male baldness. But in this world, there are people that hate it, that are affected by it, and there's people that just don't give a damn. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus does not give a damn.
right, so right here, we brought out the number three guard. And the number three guard is to slightly work our way up to that ridge. Now the ridge, let me tell you that ridge is tricky because obviously the other side is a one and a half, but that ridge is like light, dark, light. Where do you, where do you draw the line? You know what I'm saying? Because you don't want it to look bald all the way through it's weird like that area was tricky i actually cut it better than that now i go a little bit higher in this video it's not the most appealing outcome but again he's happy so i'm happy that's why you need a good balance of easy breezies and picky clients and clients that are kind of like in between because the, the easy breezies again they just simplify your life they make your day go smoothly the picky clients make you level up in the in between or it's just like a, a good combination of both be careful clients be careful you know when you're dealing with a mask you gotta move you gotta move around and maneuver around the mass strings so you don't cut it because i know i've cut a few strings with throughout this whole pandemic situation and people having to have their mask on luckily in the state of florida at least they're not as strict anymore and a lot of clients just don't wear the mask anymore which i'm cool with man i keep my mask on we we're safe out here but man having cut clients with mask on sucks anyways i got my half guard now i've already done a combination of the no blade all the way open the one all the way open on the ridge and now we've brought it together with with the half guard halfway open halfway open okay let me just pause it right here for a second and tell you this on this particular day ladies and gentlemen i was uh, at the shop alone i don't know exactly what day this was but I did go through my season of being in the shop alone. It just sucks when you are at the shop alone and you just see a walk-in come in and you have to tell him, hey, uh, how's it going, sir? Uh, I'm, I'm a little booked today. Uh, and, and by a little, I mean I'm completely booked today. I sadly can't take you. That's not really how I, I told that gentleman. Actually, that gentleman right there is a regular that never makes appointments. As many times as you tell a client, especially a regular, hey, use the booking app. They don't listen. They either do something like this where they just walk in or they try to call you. We have a booking app. Please use the booking app. I'm telling you, you're gonna get in. When you walk in, you might have wasted a whole drive to the shop. Just use the app, Baba. Use the app. All right, let's continue with this taper. You know what? I started this guideline, the base of this taper with, wait, what the heck? Another one? But you know what? This guy's not a regular. Let me give him my card. Let me let him know my situation. Hey, Papa, I'm booked too. I'm the only one today. All right, we have a booking app. This, yeah, that's the that's the booking app. Yep. So Headlines Barbershop, make sure you download it. It's the most convenient way, I promise, Papa. But look, I apologize that I can't take you today, sir. I hope to see you soon. My name's Fonz. All right, I'm the local barber. Hi, me, Fonz. I'm the local barber. I'll see you soon. All right, have a great day. All right. Take care. Sorry about that, Jesus. Let me get back into this. So, like, like I was saying, guys, look, mira, I have the trimmers now. We did the base with the clippers all the way close. I came back with the trimmers. This is not normally how I do it. I, again, we I just came back from the quarantine. I almost forgot how to cut. But we cleared it out with the shaver. And now we are continuing this taper with the blade all the way open. And then from there, we just go through a process. You close it a quarter away, you open it. And then a quarter away again, you open it some more. And you and make sure you keep looking at the mirror. Make sure you keep clearing out. <sighs> make sure you keep clearing out your fades with the brush. You don't want to leave all that hair there. You just kind of get confused. You don't want to get confused when you cut hair, especially when you're fading. You just need a, every little hair counts, and every little hair that doesn't belong needs to be exterminated. And by exterminated, I just mean brushed out. All right, let's grab our shavers again and continue on the side tapers. Look, we're going for a taper that's low enough to still see the little C cup. And again, that's more on me. That's what he wanted. He, he usually just, he, he, Jesus literally tells me, do your thing. He usually went for a one on the sides. The half that he gets now on the sides was an accident because one day I was just thinking, I was just on autopilot and I just did the half and he no, and he just left with it. And then the time that he came after that, he told me, you know what, I, Fonz, you know I didn't ask you for the half? I was like, oh damn, my bad. He was like, but I like it. I was like, oh. So it's been the half ever since. Now, 
guys, gather in, gather in. Come here, come here, meetups. When it comes to clients that don't give a damn about their haircut as much as other clients do, there are little things that they do want or desire to have their own personal victories on their image. And when it comes to Jesus, there is one thing he desires to make sure that it just complements his haircut. Take a wild guess what this is gonna be. Looking at this angle right here, looking at this angle right here, what do you think that personal victory is, huh? That's right, it's that part, baby. All right, look, check this out. We're gonna move the hair. Make sure you always move the hair. Put some tension on the hair you don't wanna cut. You wanna make sure you get a nice, solid, clear view of where you're gonna put this line, okay? Because the last thing you want is to cut the little bit of hair, the little bit of victory this man has. Jesus, I got you, bro. I'm not gonna cut none of this hair that you need, that you still have, all right? We're gonna go ahead and put the line where the hair is still short. And then I go ahead and get some 245 shave gel and apply it. Apply it all over the place. I don't even I don't even apply shave gel like this. I don't even know what made me put the shave gel in that way. I normally put dots, but I guess on Jesus, it was it was the, the full rub down. Pause. And we're gonna go ahead and get this uh, razor prepared. I got my, my blade exposed on this razor handle. And we're gonna go ahead and just a few taps. You don't need to apply too much pressure. You let the blade do the work. You get the blade on the skin and let the blade do the work. I mean, you, you gotta move it a little bit. You just don't put the blade in and not move. You just a little tap, a few taps, check your work. A few taps, check your work. Look at it, see it, and it's off a of feeling. You know how much you need to cut, you know? Depending on the blade, you might have to put a little bit more pressure, but in most cases, you don't see it. I personally use the asterisk blade. Um, I do need some blades, which reminds me, I need to go get some blades. I thought I bought some blades and I'm out of blades right now. Shout out to Dre for supplying me with blades, even though he doesn't know he's supplying me with blades. That means I need to buy some for myself and for you, Dre. Mala mia. Now check it out. This is the area I was talking about. This is the the area that I was always trying to be careful with because for some reason I'm like thinking, you know what? Like I, he's already light in the crown area and he's light on uh, his recession area, the little corners. Like I want this area to be a good balance. I don't want to go super light on this area. That means he's gonna be all is he's gonna be light all the way around. I want this to be the bridge into the rest of the hair. Oh, on oh, right here because you know his hair pokes out. I'm just going ahead and freehanding it, cutting it a little bit. It's okay. It's okay. Jesus is okay with it. And remember I was talking about the one and a half guard? I didn't even bring it up to where I wanted to. Look, I'm wasting some more time with the freaking texturizing shears, which I don't even, damn. I need to go get some texturizing shears. I haven't had texturizing shears in a few months now. Look at that. I'm just trying to uh, clear it out a little bit more on the sides, redirecting the hair, because he still wants to have enough hair in the fringe area to just flop up. You know, and, and look, this is the beauty about how I cut his hair. When you see it from the front profile, it doesn't look as bad as you think. I'm not saying it looks bad now, Jesus. You look beautiful, bro. You look beautiful. Yo, you a beautiful looking man, <laughs> And And look, check this out, check this out. So look, let me tell y'all something. It doesn't matter how it looks on the crown and how it looks on the back. Because at the end of the day, Jesus, yo, Jesus, you don't look at the back, bro. Jesus doesn't even let me show him the mirror because he trusts me, that for, that's for one. But I'm pretty sure deep down inside, he just doesn't care how it looks in the back. He doesn't have to look at the back. And he's a pretty tall guy, so the odds of somebody checking out what's going on in the back are pretty slim. What he wants to see is that flip on the front, that nice little huh in the front. So we're gonna make sure we go ahead and leave enough hair for him to style it correctly in the front. Now, what do we do, boys and girls, when it comes down to dealing with a client that has thin hair? What do you think we use, huh? Hmm? Hmm? We don't use anything heavy like gel. You better throw that option away, all right? We are not using gel today or ever on a client that has thin hair. We don't do that. We have a few options. We have texturizing powder, we have some clay, but in most cases, hairspray is enough. And again, this is Jesus we're talking about, all right? Jesus doesn't need much. Jesus doesn't even wanna waste his time on his hair. He's a busy man. He's a first responder. If you put gel on anybody that has thin hair like Jesus, look at me, look at me, you are messing up. That's not even the word I wanted to use. But listen, don't you ever, don't you ever, listen to me, don't you ever put 
gel on thin hair. But it's okay if you've been doing it because now you know you shouldn't be doing it. And I'm gonna forgive you as long as you smash that like button because if you smash that like button, it's gonna help my video out, my channel out with the algorithm because the algorithm can be a trip. You don't want the algorithm to be a trip towards me. There's a lot of people that want this cut to work out. There's a lot of people that want Jesus to look good. And the only way we're gonna make Jesus look good is by you pressing that like button, smashing that like button. Shout outs to Jesus, shout outs to the like button that you're about to smash. But let's get back to Jesus. Mira, Jesus wants that flip in the front. And we're gonna do that flip in the front for Jesus because he deserves it. He deserves that flip in the front. So we're gonna go ahead and use something light, not heavy, remember, not heavy. We're gonna go with some hairspray. And after we put a little bit of that hairspray, we're doing some, some cleanup detailing, all right? And one of the biggest details when it comes to Jesus is getting those little hairs poking out around the ridge where the parting is because there's always gonna be just one or two hanging out. So you wanna check your mirror. You wanna just like, just like, let's say this is Jesus's head right here, the ridge. You just wanna get like align with it right there, right there, you just wanna, just wanna look at it like this, which you just wanna look at it like this and see any hairs poking out. And right there, you start cutting it. Un poquito así. Un poquito así, okay? Look at that. Just a little bit at a time. Just getting those little stragglers. Don't worry about the light area. That's, that's, he's okay with that. So we're okay with that. Make sure you clean that that the neck up too, man. Don't don't forget to go, get those little... Even if they're a little hairy, you got to go the extra mile. Do it for Jesus. If you don't do it for yourself, at least do it for Jesus, okay? At least do it for Jesus. But at the end of the day, mira. Mira. Jesus. Bro. If you've never noticed it before, I'm gonna let you notice it now, Jesus. I appreciate you, bro. I don't even know if you're ever gonna see this video, but just know if you happen to see it on YouTube, if one of your family members or friends lets you know, Papa, I seen you on YouTube. Look, listen, Jesus, I appreciate you, bro, for, for always being a stand-up guy, not just for being a firefighter. I appreciate you as a person for just showing love, being patient with me. My man was patient with me when I was cutting Emiliano and taking forever. My man was patient with me when I was just learning how to cut overall. And, and that means a lot to me. That means so much. And I'm not just saying that because every year you bring me Hennessy, even though I do appreciate that a lot.